You do Trump realize Trump that Vladimir Putin plays like he, he he seems crazy to us in the West with the naked half naked horse riding photos and the and with the you know posing with the tiger. Let's talk and, about George Bush for a second. Oh no 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 no! Listen, hey, don't you wag your finger at me? <laughs> I, I did it in a nice way. But did you? They shot the protesters no, no, who no, were no. ostensibly there yeah, to get no, Yanukovych no. out. Someone what? says poison. You say Botox job goes. Yeah, yeah. You serious? You seriously yeah. saying it was yeah, a Botox yeah. job that went because wrong? Because let me tell you why. Well, let me tell you what's the point of big money. Give it to the people who don't have any, then you'll be happy. Do recent events in Eastern Europe have you confused, terrified, pretending it's not happening, or worst of all, claiming to be a geopolitical expert when you only found out Crimea was a thing last week? Well, tonight, we're gonna cut through all the bluster and, with the help of a former Kremlin advisor, find out once and for all whether we're headed for Cold War II or World War III. If you believe the Crimean narrative being played out on the nightly news, and we don't, half of Ukraine wants an EU passport, while the other half wants to strip naked and wrestle bears a la Vladimir Putin. One thing remains clear, though. I have no idea what's going on. Luckily, tonight we have in studio a very special guest, former Kremlin advisor Alexander Nekrasov. Have you ever worked for Pravda? No, because it, you, 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 it was impossible to get the job there. Really? was the best paid uh, newspaper and you had all the perks of um, you know you know special deliveries uh, you get a, you got a flat quickly you got everything <laughs> you're saying this so I, wait, I, so wish, I so wish I wish so I, wish it, I could, I could so that's just it it comes to you you didn't work for problem not for lack of trying you you wanted to get that job no, did you I, apply I, no, to be honest no I never applied because I worked as a, as a in a press agency task so it you know it's 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 the best training for journalists and i can tell you if you want to become a journalist go to work first in a press agency why because you have deadlines mm. when those hacks go to newspapers ah it takes 12 days 20 days to write an article here when i was working in the soviet times you get a call from the central committee some big wig who says here's the subject you've got 15 minutes yeah if you don't do it you're out well, that's good. <laughs> so that's, well, that's, it's that's, the that's crucible good... right there. This is what we play for. Let's get that story out. <laughs> uh, the last time America looked up and was like, Ukraine, where's that? We found it on a map. And we heard about this orange revolution. Oh, yeah, and yeah. it all seemed really happy. Yeah. And you had the two victors. You had uh, Yushchenko and Yanukovych. Yeah. And, and uh, again, I'm trying to And then the strain. KGB uh, allegedly poisoned uh, Yushchenko. So, so and he got all that sort of strange. So the protests, as I understand it, the protests all jumped in and, and said the, the state has or, or Russia has thrown their their cards in with Yanukovych, and the protesters showed up and said, "No, we want Yushchenko." The KGB poisoned Yushchenko. They, they, they really. think he had a, he had the Botox job in Austria. It went disastrously wrong. Okay, so someone what? says poison. You say Botox job goes. Yeah, you serious? Yeah. You seriously yeah. saying it was yeah. a Botox yeah. job that went because wrong? Because let me tell you why uh, it was a big lie about poisoning. Oh now, yes, they, please. They, they said that he was poisoned with dioxins, right? If you, if any of dioxins get into your body, they never leave it, and you basically die in about two years. But Victor, this, this dioxins first, like what you use to dye paper. No, it's, it's just basically you're dead technically. And uh, th what they did is that 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 when that botox thing didn't go well, they rushed back to Austria and asked that clinic um, uh, dealing with poisonous things to state that he was poisoned. And the clinic said, no, he's got nothing. There is nothing. So uh, they came again and again and again. And then finally they found one doctor there who said, yeah, 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 he's got dioxins in his uh, system. He's currently living on a 100-foot yacht in the Black Sea. He has a huge estate, by the way, <laughs> enormous estate. <laughs> and uh, he is now in, in charity, which joke. I think is the biggest money-making well, operation. It's true. You know, you, you either set a, a sector, uh, launch a sector, a charity, and you become a billionaire, you know. Unbelievable. I mean. <laughs> well, one of the things that, that blows me away about the, uh, the collapse of the... Uh, of the Soviet Union was that the 
the KGB and F- FSB and whatnot, they all became multimillionaires. Like 90% of all the private contracts that were drawn up after the, the, the Iron Curtain came down were given to members of the FSB and the KGB. Well, the, the Central Party Committee, Young, Com- uh, Young Communist League, the, the Khodorkovsky who went to jail, he was a very active Young Communist uh, League leader. He set up a huge bank, Menatep, and then bankrupted it, stealing like seven or eight billion. And all those poor pensioners suddenly lost all their savings. And everybody thought he'd go down there. Not smiling. If, and, <laughs> well, anyway, it was a fun time, yes. I, I also had so a small this- company, by the way, because you know what happened to me, which might be interesting to everyone. In, 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 in 1988, for some strange reason, Gorbachev gathered a meeting of the Central Committee on um, a sort of, uh, I don't even remember why it was, and the number two man in charge of ideology n- named me among four people whom they considered unreliable Soviet citizens. I don't know why, trust me. So what happened is that I decided that because I had no prospects automatically, I decided to become a loan shark, a businessman. Oh, sorry. So I set up a small company selling computers, and then uh, I don't know whether should should say this or not. Yes, you should. Uh, hey, <laughs> this is little happier after dark. And also, from right now, it's, from this no, point, I, it's I, sounding listen, like Alan Sugar. Listen, I didn't have any any prospects at all because my bosses summoned me and said, "Look, that's the end. If you are." labeled as an, uh, uh, you know, sort of unreliable Soviet citizen at a meeting of the Politburo and Central Committee, there are two options. Either you kill yourself or, you know, just walk somewhere or go away somewhere. And I thought, well, okay, okay, I'll just become a businessman. But uh, first you, you applied to Pravda to try to get a job. No, no Pravda after yeah. that, to, to, come on. <laughs> so what happened was I went to see some of my friends and uh, the ones who worked in TAS and they've traveled abroad and I said, if you're going to buy any computers, bring them to me and I will sell them for a better price, which I did, by right. the way. Yes. Yeah. And computers at that time were worth, well, I don't know how to compare that, but 50 grand at least, dollars. Well, what kind of a computer? What are well, we talking? you know, the, the, the computers that were making then, you know, which silly looking ones. What, the big giant I, IBMs? I had no idea, to be honest with you. I just did it to have the money to drink and just hell raise and okay. my usual well, stuff. You know, the, the story was, it used to be cars, so why not computers? And anyway, so that that's how I was uh, find myself in this situation. So I was setting this company, and I met all those future bankers, and they're all con men. Most of them were in jail, and they came out, and they were all smuggling things, like Abramovich was selling counterfeit, I forgot what, tights or something. <laughs> and his, uh, his Runs wife, Chelsea Football Club, but selling counterfeit no, tights. He, start, he started with that, you know, second Victor Yushchenko died of, or was poisoned by Botox. Yeah, uh, not poisoned. He's okay, still no, alive. He's still alive. Okay. Yeah, no, he was, dioxins well, would have killed him in three years, definitely. Okay, but you have to admit, he looked really bad well, after come the on, Botox. You should see some people who do Botox and it doesn't go well. This is true. <laughs> believe me. Trust me. Uh, trust me. Okay, but it doesn't happen to Angelina Jolie, not that she's, uh, but, uh, but doesn't happen to the A-list she looks stars. She by the way. She, she does look. She's she not looks looking odd. She, she does something to her face. You think so? All right. Have you seen David Hasselhoff? All right. We're getting we're getting <laughs> off we're getting off topic here. They're all odd, down. So okay. So we have uh, Yushchenko is swept into power. He becomes the the head of state. Everybody's happy. They wave the orange flags. I don't know why orange. And then and then corruption kicks in again. How does so? What happens? What happens what from happens that point? What happens was suddenly. The Ukrainians notice that his son is driving a Lamborghini for 300 grand and wears, would you believe it, a platinum watch, 250,000, and runs a PR campaign, a PR company agency. So slowly people started to understand that the Orange Revolution was just rubbish. Was it rubbish or did he get corrupted by the money? No, all of them got corrupted, uh, you, uh, the, the, and uh, basically they threw him out. The next election, he so it got seemed it seemed at the 11, time 11 it seemed percent. that Viktor Yushchenko had come in under po- massive popular support, and then suddenly his sons driving the Lamborghini. It happens with like Idi Amin in Africa, yeah, where suddenly the they show up in the leopard were doing skins. The same, the same. You know, this uh, woman uh, Yulia Tymoshenko, uh, she got so rich that uh, 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 being you know in the same team that uh, I think her husband was moved to some other country. Seven billion, I think, was their 
family <coughs> income. And uh, so the problem is, let me explain something to you which nobody knows. Well, okay, you, you nobody knows it. this. Pay attention. Now, the whole problem between Russia and Ukraine is that Ukraine accuses Russia of selling gas at extortion prices to it and sometimes cutting it off. Well, now, Ukraine owes something like two billion yeah, dollars moment, yeah, just but, uh, just for february i mean when i see a two billion dollar yeah, 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 two billion dollar gas but bill i think ta- maybe yeah, i need yeah, to turn down the thermostat the big problem the big problem is that the reason why the price is so high in ukraine is because the local ukrainian companies by the way this timoshenko and some of them is increasing the prices after they buy them from russia bam and the effect goes and the ukrainians think that the prices are uh, set by russia at such a level which is not true because how can Russia sell so you're, gas? So you're saying that Gazprom uh, did not increase its prices to the Ukraine? No, it was selling at the proper market prices, but these guys increased it because that's where the market... Who are these guys? Yeah, but did, the did, guys did, Gazprom, in, did Gazprom increase the prices? No, no, it's market prices, world market. Why should it sell more? You can't sell uh, anything above world market prices because a comp- <laughs> countries go to other people. So you can buy from Norway or something. So they were so wait, selling the, at but the where very, are the where are the Ukrainians going to get their going to get no, their natural could, gas? That could have been arranged. But the, what I'm saying is that that's how the bad perceptions, you know, be, be, kick in and. Uh, the Ukrainians sort of only later they started to realize that their guys were really playing a dirty game, and that's why the whole Orange Revolution ended. Okay. Very in tears, I would say. I'm not saying when, when, because at this point, America, I'm like, eh, everybody's fine. And went back to sleep. <laughs> Well, good for them, actually, especially in Denver. Especially in Denver. No, but at Denver, it wasn't it wasn't legal back then. <laughs> I just so. want to ask you. I want to ask you something really straight, Ali Alexander. Whose team are you on right now? I'm absolutely neutral because I can tell you something. It it does just doesn't make sense. For example, in Ukraine crisis, to side with anybody, Yanukovych is exactly the same as the other lot. So that's the problem for Ukraine, you see? So There's Yanuko- no one to pick from. So Yanukovych comes in, he's voted in. Yes, this is a he, he's a democratically elected leader, right? He's now worth $12 billion. He's forced to flee, and they leave this amazing palatial residence, which has a private zoo. Did you ever see the private zoo? What I tell you, you do, that you don't know, that uh, an aerial photo shows us that the guys who are in power now have their villas across the road. Very impressive, by the way. Really? I don't know about the zoos, but I can tell you, if you look from the, from, from the above, air, oh, oh, we'll look. have to draw up that image. Yeah, I tell you. So yeah. the people who are in power so now... they're all the same. You see, they're basically sort of cha- replacing each other, and then they'll be kicked out in, 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 in a matter of time. It's, it's like in Britain, you know? There's no one to vote for. In the last election in America, 120 million didn't vote because there was no choice. You know, you, you, you couldn't vote for, for what's his name. Um, Who are we talking? The, oh, uh, McCain. No, 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 the previous election. The Mormon, who, what's his name? Oh, uh, I, we, try to, we, try to, we try to put that, put that I in forgot. our... Mitt Romney. Mitt Romney. Mitt Romney. Oh, I really... So we have was, to bring up the Romney. He's Mormon, for crying. I mean, yeah. nothing against the Mormons. I've seen no, the, the book of Mormon, people, that's but, very good. But the point was that nobody liked Obama by then, and nobody liked him. And so, 120 million didn't vote. Can you imagine 120 million? Well, okay, this is, this is a point that comes up again and again. I just want to, want to ask you as well, Alexander. I mean, your views are pretty close to the official Kremlin views, aren't they? No, 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 no. How do, no. How do they differ? No, they're not. I, I think I'm the only sort of r- uh, Russian commentator who speaks in a normal way, without the Soviet input, without the stupid Soviet, you know, t- speak, which still exists, unfortunately. And I, I just, I just talk about what I see. Okay. So how do you defend Vladimir Putin, for instance, going on to state TV and saying, oh no, the troops in, in Crimea are not Russian? By the way, about that, uh, today on Al Jazeera official website, my article came out, uh, sar- Putin's sarcasm, and uh, I explain what happened. Oh, this is sarcasm. Article. No, no, I explain he- what happened. Okay. And uh, the reason he said this is was because uh, of course, they're soldiers. Of course, they're Russian soldiers. Excuse me. We have we have permanently based in Ukraine in Crimea twenty five thousand troops at the base in Sevastopol. Right. It's the third. So they're there anyway. They are allowed 
to go out of the base if the situation deteriorates around the base by agreement with Ukraine. They are allowed to add more troops, so 6,000 were sent in. Now, what happened was this. The reason why they had to block all the bases and stop uh, those guys coming from the north was because uh, in other parts of the country, those thugs, those neo-fascists, you know, all these freedom party and the right uh, sector who are now, by the way, all armed, they smashed all those arms depots, got their weapons from them, and started terrorizing everybody. I, I spoke to my friend in Kiev. He said, it's horrible here. It's gangs are, um, are going everywhere, attacking people, terrorizing people. Settling old scores. Yeah, that as well. But the right sector uh, is a very dangerous uh, neo-fascist organization uh, against Jews, against Russians, against immigrants, against blah, 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 you name it. Uh, it and, the and gays, it, I'm guessing. I think so, yes. yes. And uh, the lot, the lot. And uh, the problem is that we've got those people now in charge and Putin realized that there would be a bloodbath in Crimea. There would have been a bloodbath there. So he had to put that. Now, what is okay, interesting so, about let this? Let me interrupt you here so for a second, invasion. Alexander. Hold no, just, on a second. Let me just, just leave one second. Hey, yeah. don't you wag your finger at me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did it in a nice way. It did you? It's okay, point, sorry. It's it, pointed out like a warning it's, shot. It's deep-seated <laughs> issues with my father. It's really not your, it's really not your fault. But they can, you can't come out and say these guys are... All right, let me but ask you. But you didn't fin let me finish. All right, but let me you ask you it. this. Who, who did the shooting? Who killed the protesters in Independence Square in, in well, Kiev? Well, that's an interesting thing, isn't it? Because uh, the conversation between Baron Ashton and the Estonian foreign minister tells us that the snipers were hired by the opposition. And now it is a huge scandal. And the Russians filmed it all. And the Russians are now preparing a package, a sort of a, a, sort of a file with food, with everything, photos, footage, you know, telephone videos, I'm oh, sorry, telephone filming, and they're going to present it to the UN and to the EU and probably to the Hague, and you would see some serious, I've, I've seen some of it, blimey. So it's and, not, so there, it's not the riot police as was, riot as the police reports. were given ammunition three days after they lost 20 of their comrades, so later, yes, they so, okay, so you have a fire. You, you have a, a timeline where essentially on, I don't know, February 20th or whatever, all the protesters are gathered in the square. They, they say they want to oust Yanukovych, and the next day there's like a bloodbath, and then the next day... No, 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 it started on the 1st of December. Oh, no, it's actually in November they all started to gather. Sorry no, no, about no, that. No, the, the violence started on the 1st of December... And uh, the violence. The violence and, we're talking and, and about. And what happened was there was many On people. February 20th, 88 people are killed in, in 48 hours in, in, in Kiev. Yeah, out of them, 20 cops and 12 supporters of the government. Who's the doing protesters. the shooting? Who's the snipers, doing the, sh the snipers? Snipers paid by who? Who's doing Who's the saying? The snipers paid by opposition according to that conversation. Opposition of what? No, opposition against Yanukovych. No, if you they want shot to the protesters. What happened, they shot the protesters no, 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 who were no, ostensibly there again, to get Yanukovych no, no. out. No, no, no. Listen, I don't like Yanukovych as well, so I don't care what 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 is happening between them there. What I do—it's not know. like or dislike. I'm confused. Well, well, you, let you're not the man explain. All right, sorry. <laughs> thank, thank you, Ali. <laughs> we move from Sar That's Putin, why we have the Sarkas, feminine touch. I'm we, shutting up. Oh, we oh, we went to all over the place. They, they hijacked a, a, a legal, legal protest against Yanukovych's government by many people who didn't like him. You know, the economy was not doing well, salaries, you know, tiny, standards of living low, perfectly legal. Nobody's saying anything. But the problem is that these groups, this right sector, Freedom Party, terrible people, they moved in and a few hundred of their people armed, they caused all the mess. The peaceful protesters didn't want hold to. Hold on, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. How do you know this? How do we know this? It's all filmed. It's going to be presented no, how, how to How do you know this? How, Alexander, how do well, you know this? Well, I, I saw that footage. So it's going to be common knowledge very soon. The problem is that the reason why they're so calm, you know, when Putin says, let's investigate. It better be common knowledge real soon, because the three of us don't want to look like let, schmucks. Let's, let's investigate all of that. So when he said... There are no Russian troops, there are volunteers. Of course it was sarcasm, because the message was, listen, the message was, if you think that those neo-Nazis in Kiev are the freedom, sort of loving democracy, leaning people, then we have no troops in, in Crimea. 
That was, and then he smiled sarcastically. That was the whole point. Of course, there are Russian troops. Okay. They do, saved you, Crimea. You do from realize the that Vladimir Putin plays like he, he he seems crazy to us in the West with the naked, half naked horse riding photos and the and with the you know posing with the tiger. Let's talk and, about George Bush for a second. Oh no 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 no! no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. let's talk about George. Listen, Bush. George Bush He's paints a, a point. George Bush paints a beautiful picture of a little poodle dog right now. You know, by the way, in which what we noticed in in, in our country. Country, that your last three presidents were all doing dope when they were young. Yeah. No, I'm just saying that when you have... Do you a have a problem with this? You, hey, I, you sound like a man who wants to go to Denver right now. No, Let's no, do no. it. When you have a nuclear button somewhere. And by the way, Joe Biden, one heartbeat away from... Yeah, I know. I realize That's this. That's a worrying situation. Yeah, you way, say it's a worrying everyone. situation, but I give Joe Biden 24 hours after Obama dies for somebody <laughs> to pick him up. That's just... <laughs> oh, okay. So the mob moves in I again. Wouldn't, I, wouldn't, right. I wouldn't worry about that. You know, okay. there's, th- this is information I have. So, yeah, okay, but Putin plays like, he plays like a child in a sense of like, he's, you don't know what he's going to do. He seems like kind of a dangerous tyrant. Now, I agree. I will give you George Bush was completely insane and to, you oh, know, see. and okay. to hear, oh no, and to have, you know, John Kerry to stand up and say, you know, nations cannot go into other sovereign well, nations. We, we liked him, under, by the way. We thought he was working for us. Yeah, at that under point. false pretenses. <laughs> yeah. You want to have, that was sarcastic too. Nations should not be able to invade under na- other nations under false pretenses that we was john Kerry doing so. like that by the way <laughs> okay by but way, that's yeah. sarcasm to work in, the, in the same way Obama that when putin says there's no when, when vladimir putin says there's we have no russian troops well, in ukraine that article it's on the it, it came up today and this my articles usually attract a lot of people on al jazeera I, that does sound odd probably that i'm writing for al jazeera how do you how do you feel about vladimir putin have you met him no no, no. The, you know when when he was appointed I went on, on British television and I said, well, we've done the full circle. We had democracy with Yeltsin and now we have a cop running our country, former cop. It was well, 16 years cop. in the KGB. Well, it's still, I call them cops anyway. Cops. Okay. Well, we cops. had, in George Bush Sr. used to run the CIA. It's well, not it was, like we do things completely way, differently. George Sr. is one of the richest men in the world, by the way. He got his son elected. And they made a hell of a lot of money, by the way. Did they? But it's probably I don't know. You're not allowed. It to wouldn't. Consider. No, you can you can say that. I mean, like you say, we're we're under the radar enough that we're not <laughs> causing enough of a stink before. No. But you know, I think if we can if we can promote uh, your ideas, some of my ideas, some of the, the ideas that are out there, not even ideas but truths, we'll be dead soon. So let's continue to rabble uh, to right, raise some okay. rabble. Well, you see, I I you know. When you say um, uh, death soon and so on, I've, I've lived in Soviet times in the worst possible times when the KGB were really making my personal life hell. Because I was, I graduated and I lived in Britain before that in the 60s, 70s. So I was a prime target for them to be a spy, right? So they summoned me on my last year of college to a strange place. And they said, would you like to go and work as a scientist? Oh. Which sounded, which sounded <laughs> sinister. I thought it's the torture chamber. Did, did, you, know, the did you have language. any scientific training at this point? At that po- no, at that point, no. And I said, you know, I'd love to, love to, but I'm not ready. I'm not ready. You know, yeah. Give me more time. Yeah, you need to so take primary school chemistry. So five times I chemistry. said no to them. And when they hear five times no, what they do is that they try to get me drafted into the army, into special forces. And from there, I can't say no, because uh, you're under, you know. That's right. And I, I had a girlfriend whose um, grandfather was a senior commander in the Russian army. And so I said, do something. So she went to see her grandfather, and he was very famous. Marshal of artillery, you know, five orders of Lenin, Stalin gave him two, and so on. And he said to her, he needs to drink a lot and then come for the medical check. And what he said to drink a lot, you know, I drink a lot. Yeah. I can do a liter right. immediately. So my blood pressure went through the roof when I was <laughs> checked the next day. And the doctor said, no, I can't. I can't allow him to become special forces. He's going to die, basically. So, so <laughs> I can't allow him. That saved me. But there was a phone call, I suspect. Okay. She really liked me. So you d- you I was d- a handsome lad, by the way. Oh, you still are, sir. No, you no, still no, are. no. Oh, I was a on. much more handsome no, lad. No, no. You've got... You haven't you haven't been drinking lately, so I think you, I think your handsomeness is no, coming no, back. No, no, because she really wanted to, that me to marry her, and once she got me off the hook, I just you know drifted. 
You fled I, as no, fast no, as you no, can. No, 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 no. I, I, I was in a band called Perpetuum Mobile. Then he was we in wrote, a band, folks. What was the name of the band? Perpetuum Mobile, Eternal Engine. And we wanted to do an, uh, an LP, but uh, we, we failed to find the money. <laughs> that shows your age, doesn't it? You wanted to do an LP. An L- that is that is very <laughs> quick. <laughs> we didn't have CDs let's, then. Well, well, let's go back. Uh, let's go back. I you wish we had CDs. By you way. haven't met you haven't met Vladimir Putin. You you could describe him as a cop. But Ali, can you please uh, pull up that uh, that quote from uh, George W. Bush describing Vladimir Putin? He said, and I won't do the accent. Oh, please do the accent. No, please, I really, no, absolutely. Um, I looked the man in the eye. I found Mm. him to be very straightforward and trustworthy, and we had a very good dialogue. I was able to get a sense of his soul. Yeah. Well, I know know that, I know that quote, yes, because we were all surprised then, yes. But George is strange, isn't he? Oh, wasn't he? Isn't he? He he was quite he was quite a strange man. But he's a few years removed from office, and as an American, I like to forget. Ah um, uh, no 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 no! You can't because you elected him twice. You see, that's your problem. That is, and you cannot oh, get no, no, away no. from that it. That is not my problem because on the I would have you know, sir, that when he was elected the second time, I was like, I'm out, and okay. that's how I've been here that long. Two thousand, I was out. I was like, he is not a two term. And you know, the rumor was in Moscow that that was not a pretzel. You know, oh no, you don't think I, so. We thought he He's was really, back on coke. You're you're bringing up that fact that he almost died with a with a. We pretz- thought he was on coke again. I mean, our suspicion was that he started drinking again because you know, love affairs and so well, whatever. How are you? Know. How are you getting this info? Well, you're we making yourself less info. trustworthy we by turning a pretzel. Everywhere. Look, it was salt on the pretzel. We have co- not yeah. cocaine. You can't choke on a pretzel. Come on, how stupid. Okay. There we are. Right. You've just made I, your own point, sir. You've I just made. You've fair. just made your own point. All right. Okay. Well, you want to turn it. You want to turn it onto onto America, and that's fine. We'll do that. Um, one of the people who actually called this, and this, I think, you know, the, you're familiar with the seven seals of the apocalypse? Sure, of the, course. Yes. I know by far. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure either the fourth seal or the fifth seal is what is is when. Uh, is when Sarah Palin actually gets something right. Okay. And uh, th- she's got a quote from 2008. Ali, you have to do the voice. <laughs> Absolutely not. Coming from hockey mom Sarah Andy. Palin. <laughs> After the Russian army invaded the nation of Georgia, Senator Obama's reaction was one of indecision and moral equivalence, the kind of response that would only encourage Russia's Pu- Putin to invade Ukraine next. 2008. She said that in 2008. Wow. Wow. Well, and you didn't elect her. How dare you? I know it was I mean, because it was because of McCain. We wanted we if she had been the front on the on the head of the ticket, she might have gotten in. Right. But uh, yeah, people weren't going to vote for <laughs> Ukraine. Later, it turned out that she was crazy. How do you feel about Sarah Palin getting something right? She does live in Alaska, which you can see. Yeah, I mean, she's got she's well connected to Russia. I mean, in Russia, well, technically speaking. But she did say a lot of things because you pick out one thing she said, but you you, you can you know even a broken clock is right you, twice you, a day you, kind you of thing. Can, you can you can you can talk about a lot of things she said, and there wouldn't be so um, you know for for seeing. All right, well one more one more go. Uh, right now, what's happening mm-hmm. in, in the states? And I, I mentioned this earlier. I often feel embarrassed. As, as, on events in America, the fact that we don't have a decent health care system the, and that type of thing. The fact that there is a news channel that pretty much pumps out propaganda from one point of view 24 hours a day in, in Fox News. And some of the pundits on there on the Republican side... Sorry, I thought you were talking about Russia Today for a moment. Oh, uh, Russia... Did I say... What did I say? Fox News? No, no, you said Fox, Fox News. Fox News, yeah. Russia Today. Come on, they're two, they're, they're two halves of the same no, coin. No, no, no. Russia Today is, is mild compared... This is okay. I haven't watched much R- Russia. Day. I haven't watched. Much I was Fox on it, news. by the way, two days ago. On on crosstalk. You were on crosstalk. Yeah, but that was a silly program because uh, no, everybody agreed with each other. I was very unwell. I couldn't hear anything they were saying. Peter Lovell doesn't like me because I said once when the microphone was on and I didn't know. I said Peter Lovell is going to talk to me. He's a bloody Soviet, you know, propagandist and so on. And he heard everything. Oh no! And then I, I put on those, you know, headphones and said, "Oh, hello, Alexander. No, no, no. I don't do." And I thought, okay, all Here right. We are. Well, that's probably yes. It might have been the end of my career on Russia Today, but they still call me because I'm. How did it feel to be on Fox News? No, no, Russia Today. Oh, Russia, oh, sorry. Oh, come on. <laughs> Fox News. Fox News, you have to be, you know. Would you go on Fox News? 
Why not? If Why they not? pay, oh, they don't pay. No, no they I pay. won't. They, no, no, no Rush Today will pay me because I forced them. Okay, so the situation that's playing out in, in Crimea, it it seems uh, it seems to me that you do know that about four people are listening to us in America because nobody. No, cares. we get good. We get good numbers in America. No, no I mean yeah. about um, about Ukraine. Sorry, that's Kiev. right. That's why we're doing the show. Okay. Is we're trying to get people to go. Hey, this is this is a this is a big global event. No, this is I something think that's happening. Here's a subject that that will multiply your listeners. Okay, do it. Sex is very overrated, full stop, okay. by people who don't get any. Sex is overrated by people who don't... So the people who talk about it the most are getting it the least? Not get... Yes, yes. Because it's a very interesting subject. There's an article on my website. Well, I think you'll like notice that. that I haven't mentioned it once <laughs> during this uh, during this no, show. No, I just and, thought uh, that some of the... You know, some I don't day. think, Ali, have you brought up anything sexual uh, in, <laughs> the, you in know, the... I have to, I was thinking Alexander was a bit of a love rat. Mm. Just, I'm not a love rat. Come on. Oh. Oh. I did the love rat. Okay, right. apply that to the situation in Crimea, which is, I think, wh- where you were going. No, actually, I wasn't going there. What? Oh, yes, yes, uh, yes, Crimea, yes. Crimea, now. Let Ukrainian me girls are hot, no, no, that's no, a no, given. No, well, sort of, yeah, but what I want Little to hairy, say is but important, important. Important thing is this. Crimea never had a referendum, ever. Khrushchev, who was a bloodthirsty thug, who was a left hand of, of, of Stalin's, I mean, right hand, left, it doesn't matter, uh, in, 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 in Ukraine, and slaughtered, Nine million or ten million, you know, presided over the genocide. He decided to shut them up and give them um, what's his name, Crimea, yeah. as a present. Okay. Nobody asked him. Then came reformer Gorby, and he said, you know, let's do something about the Soviet Union, and then the Soviet Union collapsed. And Yeltsin did not really do anything about Crimea. So it sort of stayed with Ukraine. Nobody asked anybody. So we never had, they never had a referendum to decide what is their status, whom they're going to be with. So in a sense, I feel sorry for them. But this referendum, which is going to happen in a week, is not perfectly timed, I would say, when we have a sort of a war brewing up (laughs) everywhere. So... I would I would say to to the boys there guys there will be trouble. Okay, here's the question. What is the best case scenario for the people the of Ukraine? The best scenario. case scenario. I want you here I'm going to sprinkle a little fairy dust. Right. Okay? And you're, the best case scenario right now, what are the what does the West do? What does Russia do and what happens to the people of Ukraine? Well, you probably best case. haven't heard this word. Uh, uh, that is being used by all the for, you know Western politicians. They escalate, they escalate, they escalate. escalate. It's yeah. been all over the place. So I suggested to them in one of my interviews on some big channel to de-escalate themselves. Right. And well, <laughs> in a sense that everybody has to cool down. They need to go down. to Denver. Probably all of them, yes. A G8, that's a good place. Instead they of should Georgia. hold, that's it, we've yep. solved the problem. Yep. First yep. step, yep. G8 conference, yep. straight to Denver. They straight get, to they Denver. get a really, you know, they have a really good brand, I've heard from my, I've heard right. second Allegedly, it's, you say alleg- alleged. It's a strain, a allegedly. allegedly uh, yes. It's called Green Crack, and they green grow crack. it, they grow it out there, and it's perfectly organic. Probably it's a, sold out already. It's, I mean, it, you know what, what? just, it. it's, it is, it is, a, it is very hard, it is so, very hard to get. But if we could get that to the G8 summit, we might, so a de-escalation. But here's the the problem in the U.S. right now, they're they're making this all about Obama, his ineffectiveness, that he's a weak president. The Republican right, they really are using this as a stick yeah, to beat him with. They want to win the Senate, don't they? Well, it, but is this? How is this crisis and they'll not? Probably will win the but Senate. how is this? Explain to America how this whole crisis is not about the American midterm elections. Not. It's not. I can't do that. Can you? <laughs> Ali, Ali, give us give us some quotes from the Republican right, if if no, you would. Well, can I actually go back uh, uh, just a yes, two please? Is is the um, the vote in Crimea? It's not actually going to be recognized constitution in Ukraine anyway, is it? And whatever yeah, Crimea decides, it's not uh, technically uh, uh, you recognized know, it's like, by the Ukraine. What they're saying now is that over there is that you know Kosovo was uh, torn away from Serbia without any explanations. Nobody really sort of, you know, explained anything. So they just say, well, we'll do that. I'm not actually, I'm saying, I think it's bad timing. Because, you know, you don't do a referendum when there are tanks everywhere. I think Ukrainians moved 35,000 troops to to the border with with Crimea. It's not a good time for a referendum. So oh. so best case scenario is a de-escalation. Maybe some troops yeah, go that, back that, into that, the but bases. I to continue. Yes, please. 
because I'm a former troubleshooter for the Kremlin. Troublemaker, did you say? Troublemaker is different. And a troubleshooter for Security Council, Russian, and troubleshooter for Finance Ministry. I chased all these people who stole money from the people. Uh, that's the time for troubleshooters to get in, sit down together from both sides, and hammer out a deal, which might not be great, I, but I it will prevent the war. I don't see Putin as kind of the guy who wants to sit back in a room in Denver and go, hey, dude, let's, let's no, like no, no. work he, it out. He, he, he lets his people... Okay, but some of his talking. people are saying that it was Blackwater troops from America who originally, uh, you know, who, who originally killed the protesters. There's all no, kind... No, no, no. These were guys trained in Lithuania and Poland. Okay, That's so already the, established. So this is the Russian version of Blackwater. These are the snipers that were on the roof shooting protests. No, this were those neo-Nazis because they had those semi, uh, you know, military. Okay, these are right-wing par paramilitaries. Yeah. But these are not the same people who are actually in Russian uniforms without the insignias rolling No, these tanks. are troops. troops. These are troops, Russian troops, because otherwise there'd be a bloodbath in Crimea. That had to be prevented. So, so Putin puts his, like, most chilled out uh, people into the into a room with America's most chilled out people and Ukraine's most chilled out people they have a conference in Denver and they work it out what does that look like what does the solution look like does Crimea just sort of secede and become well, de facto part of it's Russia probably now it's too late I think with Crimea I think they're going to have that referendum then we'll have hell breaking out because obviously Kiev won't accept it you know there'll be again Jets flying, battleships coming into Black Sea and come, going out again. I think we're in a you know three four weeks of turmoil. What is what is uh, if I were in the, if I were going shopping, what does Crimea have to recommend it as a possession for my nation? Well, it's got you know it's got a, 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 one of the best sea, seaside resorts. It's okay. got obviously tourism. It's got. It's got wine, nice weather, wine, vineyards. Good wine. I mean, the best in the world. It was the Tsar's vineyards. Okay. Uh, well, technically, it's obviously it's, it's agricultural. Mostly. Agricultural. Okay. They don't, they, Bucolic. Yeah. Because they were not allowed to to build any factories or plants because it mostly was you know hotels and um, children's sanatoriums. Ali, are, are you writing the tourist brochure for Crimea? <laughs> No, I, I'm not absolutely doing that, actually. I've got <laughs> photographs and, uh, you know, everybody on holiday in their little shorts but and all guys, that. But, guys, guys, on a serious note, you know why, why, why nobody trusts America anymore? Because of Libya and Iraq. You know, in Iraq, I tell you why Iraq is a problem. You should have at least held to account somebody. At least someone. Nobody went to prison. Uh, you Guantanamo mean, you, uh, you is still know, open. People, people don't really trust you because you had a huge war which was started on false pretenses. And no one, not a single person, you know, answered for that. I also would point out that Libya was not a great no, and moment the in, in the history of, of the West because, let's face it, okay, Gaddafi was obviously a dictator and a killer, but look at it now. It's run by dictators and killers and, and sort of jihadists. Well, as you were saying, as as is Ukraine. This is a, all right. This is something that I wanted to maybe bring up a little later, but we've kind of we, we've stumbled into it. You hear a lot of talk about the Russian oligarchy, the Russian oligarchs here in London, but really what we're looking at is a global oligarchy, where we have a concentration of wealth, where the top one percent owes you know owns as much. Uh, real, you know, in terms of real money as the bottom 40%. I look at this conflict and other conflicts like Iraq, like what's happening in Syria, and it makes me wonder, what is, what's actually going on? Is this about nations or are nations just sort of the puppets and the nation leaders the puppets? Who are the puppet masters? How does this situation in Ukraine sort of feed the global well, oligarchy? Well, you, you have to ask yourself a simple question. Okay. Who benefits from all these things, you know, the crisis in Ukraine? And you get a short list of bankers, oil companies, speculators on the markets who've made the fortune already because the oil prices went up, gold went, you know, all over the place. That's that's the lot, and that's on the, the rule politicians. Collapsed. Politicians will obviously gain afterwards, like Tony Blair did and George Bush, they get paid after after they leave. So who benefited? So who benefited from from Iraq aside from Halliburton? Oh, there were a lot of companies, you know, the, uh, beh behind the scenes who were in sort of s international small ones. I think a trillion was made quietly on the side for these people. It feels to me like there's a machine that's that's in in the business of sort of gobbling up countries, just destroying countries, stripping them of national natural resources, and Ukraine is next, and then maybe I don't know Venezuela. No, Russia is next. 
You think Russia is going to be a lot of mineral wealth too much. So you think that these same global corporations are going to... Yeah, because, because they're salivating, looking. I mean, can you imagine? In the I mean? name of Russia or in the name of... Well, I don't know how they do it. I mean, look like they did it in Ukraine. Ukraine, what they want from Ukraine, they want the agricultural land. They want a huge market to sell their goods that nobody wants. And uh, it's, 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 it's a long list of people because radioactive materials will be stored by Chernobyl. Is that, that, that they want to do, obviously. So, and of course, labor force, this is a qualified labor force, intelligent, educated, much better than the guys who come and don't know anything and, you know, okay, so you've cars everywhere. You've given us our best case scenario. It de-escalates. Probably Crimea goes over to the, to the Russian side. There's going to be a few weeks of turmoil, but eventually it settles down and the common people can go back to uh, hopefully getting some iPods. Can we just, can we just ask, um, Alexander, do you see partition? Because there is a major difference there. Yeah, yeah, it's possible. I mean, it's, definitely. It, that's definitely, possible. Most definitely. That was, yeah. yeah, that's that's my it's follow-up. It's a possibility. No, it's a, <clears throat> it's a possibility. I'm not saying you know, definitely it will happen but yes as one of the possibilities because they always basically coexisted like two countries you know brought together what, what are we going to name our, our new countries i have no idea come on i mean this is um, it's too it, it's too intense at the moment come Everybody's, on give us a name name the countries please new ukraine old ukraine I don't new know. ukraine and old ukraine well, russian probably, is the old ukraine new uh, U- ukraine probably, is the one probably probably progressive but, ukraine okay but if that happens how is this whole thing not a colossal misstep by by putin and by russia to say by okay putin and by russia well, by the west and by by everyone no but um, if if you bring in troops into crimea and it eventually causes a split into New Ukraine and but old they Ukraine. They were there all the time, yeah. But I understand that they're. Th- <laughs> I understand that they they're were there. there. They were based there. <laughs> but if you separate them out nationally, then sooner or later, it's old like Ukraine. It's like to say that Obama sent his troops to Okinawa. You know, they're they're, they're based all the time. That's the okay. problem. And if okay. in Okinawa okay. somebody starts messing around, they will leave their barracks. Because that's the situation. Okay, but Every just in, American base, but just in terms they of would ge- leave their barracks because if situation escalates or there's a crisis, they have to because they have to protect, uh, pr- provide protection. But, you know, with this conversation is like who is worse than America than Russia? Who started more wars? I think America actually started more wars. Oh, no, I think you'll find. I think I think. Hey, we both America. did Afghanistan pretty badly. But when you mentioned oligarchs, I really need to... Sp- to say a few words in defense of Russian oligarchs, okay? No, I wasn't. Ma- I no, wasn't no, I taking. Want to say a few but, words. Uh, uh, with I the finger say, again. I with I the finger again. I want to say a few words. I was Alexander may be an oligarch, and he may just wanting to defend his kind. I Come wasn't on. making. A, I wasn't taking a shot. Of course, I would never take a shot at an oligarch because that would be the end no, of I'm my not, life. No, no, no. <laughs> but I'm not taking uh, a shot at the Russian. I'm saying that it's not about the Russian oligarchs. It's about the global. No, it's a lot about them because the, about the sanctions go- were supposed to hit them. Those smart sanctions that Obama announced and that the Europe was sort of trying to you're, announce. You're, saying, you're saying they're not so smart? No. What I want to say about them, of course they're greedy. Of course they're stupid. Of course they're vulgar. Of course they're badly educated. But show me a billion in America or any other country who's different. Who's any different. Show me. Please. Anyone. Well, this is not a natural... This is not a... Uh Again, this is beyond nationalism. No, I'm just defending the Russians because they get all the stack and the, you, you're all Okay, but in, in, the, in London they do. You're trying to give the money away and still remain the most richest people. All right, people let, let's, the, let's be honest. Universe. There are hardly... I, I can't name a billionaire that has a nice house. I mean, they all look ridiculous. Look at, look at Yanukovych when he I would arrest left. anybody who makes more than a billion at once. Immediately. That's, it's impossible to make a billion. See, Pete, Trust me. Pete and I have had this conversation that anyone who becomes president in the United States has to be able to raise $200 million to fund a campaign, and therefore they are sociopaths. They have to be, to raise $200 million from no, everybody a billion, else. a billion. Now it's a billion. Now it's a billion. You say yeah, that figure billion, has gone up. Two billion or something. But, uh, but the point is this. All this confusion is going on because we have a serious problem. We don't have a mechanism to sort out conflicts. The UN is dead, hope, hopeful, hopeless. The Ban Ki-moon should just stand down and just forget it. Is it Ban Ki-moon or well, I mean, is it just, lot. you're they're, just they're saying the whole corrupt, thing. They're all corrupt, they're, they're all incompetent. They all go shopping all the time, you know. I don't even know where they go shopping. Where do they go shopping? And they're given all those, you know, because they don't pay tax. Yeah. They're huge salaries. They they go to uh, Saks Fifth Avenue and they just stay there till they're given discounts. They bust all of them. And <laughs> did, the point is that... Did you used to they, run, were you a sales assistant at Saks Fifth Avenue too? No, because I, know, I knew a lot of people who worked in the UN. Oh, I was going to I thought you were going to say They're Saks Fifth Avenue. They're of some top officials from all over the place. They do nothing. They entertain themselves with things I can't even say on air. 
Yes, you oh, can. Oh, yeah, you well, can. Well, 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 And uh, I would I would move the UN to oh. Ethiopia and let them be closer to the suffering. Let them be somewhere that they will have to do something. That's because, not a bad idea. Because good idea. if the like UN that. would move to Ethiopia, the GDP of that country will go through the roof. Because New York depends on the UN. New York will go bust if they, if they move out. Can you imagine the size of that? Huge. Well, they would obviously open up a Saks Fifth Avenue in, in, in Well, yeah, well, that's, I mean, that's that something <laughs> gradually started, but, but it will benefit those poor people, you okay. see? Or maybe they should go to uh, Rwanda where people are still dying, this, this and at least they'll start protecting... This is, an excellent, this is an excellent point, and it's... Okay, this is the idealist in me, is that I get really, really upset and just sort of demoralized by n just nationalism in this day and age when information is flowing across borders, when the real people in power are multinational corporations, and... When do we get to be a globe? When do we get to go, we are living in a closed system with finite resources, and we don't actually have time for all this squabbling between nations and, oh, you started more wars, and we started more wars. We've both started a lot of wars. And, you know, obviously you speak for all of Russia, I speak for all of America. And it just seems, what can we do? Yeah, but you are proud of it, and we are not. That's the difference what, between I, us. Well, what do you mean I'm proud of it? Well, because America is always proud of its history and heritage. and has 50 are, yeah, We have 200 years. We don't have much to be proud of. Yeah. No, no, I mean about we the wiped wars. out the Native the Americans. The problem is, guys, that the glo globe. Glo How know. dare you accuse me of being proud and nationalistic? <laughs> I am the opposite of that. No, no, I am disgusted. No, no. Globalism is a dangerous thing because it allows those multinationals and banks to control easily the whole world. It's better to be separate than the bankers start to find it difficult. When global, I mean, you know, I've read Marx. You didn't. All of him, because I was forced to. Uh -huh. And then I started to think maybe I should that I should know him. And I can tell you, he was wrong on all points. He was a sick man. Yeah. He was he, a psychopath. He, he lived down here in London. And he, he liked a money a lot because he didn't have it, but Engels paid for his bills. He, they drank like hell in my... I live in Highgate, you know. There's a flask pub. They still remember the fights and the vomit. But what, what, I, what I'm saying... That, what, oh. uh, that's how tough they were. Yes. What We're I'm talking saying, with a real Marxist here, folks. We're talking what, about what, fights <laughs> and vomit and Karl Marx. Uh, yes, but no cross-dressing like Freud did with his... I uh, forgot yes. his brother. And um, so the point here is this, that globalism is a dangerous uh, trend because we need to separate each other and then the bankers and the big oil companies and all those other people, uh, they find it difficult, more difficult to control everybody. Because that's why they want the Because if we, have, if we have, a glo if, we have a glo if we have globalism, then it's just going to concentrate the hand, concentrate the power into fewer exactly. hands. Exactly, exactly. But when I look at it, I, I hate, I mean, not, a, not as an environmentalist, per se, but as someone who just loves trees and, 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 and clean oceans and clean air and, and, and this kind of thing, and good food that's not toxic and poison, it just seems Denver. like... Denver, Denver, I think Denver. Denver. <laughs> Denver. That's it. Yes. You know, I lived in Denver before they passed the laws, and it wasn't all of nice that. Maybe story. it's time let to go back. Let me tell you a nice story. Please tell me a nice story, because uh, the next question is horrible. When the Greenpeace people got busted for climbing on that oil rig, And they came to me, uh, uh, and they were looking at about 25 years hard labor. So Wh one of which, the, which oil rig remind uh, remain our listeners in the, in the in the outside you know, uh, Arctic Circle. Okay. Arctic. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. And so they <clears throat> looking at 15 or 20 years. And okay. one of that's the, north of Toronto to all you. Top, top of the one of the top guys came to me and said, "Help us," because I did an interview and I I, I said that Greenpeace are idiots; they should not do this. So you know what we come up with a plan. We drank. So much scotch together. This is always a good start. Oh, the <laughs> drinking and the vomit. He paid for one. I mean, for once, somebody paid for me. The bill was for two people, scotch and two sandwiches, 366 pounds. Wow. And 50 pence. That's expensive That's sandwiches. Sandwich. Yes. No, no, whoa, no, was no, in the, whoa, was, whoa, that, guys. Whoa, that was what was scotch, in the sandwich? That was the scotch. That was the scotch. No, the sandwich was some rubbish. And we, I came up with a brilliant plan. I said, do you know Paul McCartney? And he said, Yes. I said, call him now from here. We were drunk completely. And I said, tell him to write a letter to Putin and say, dear Vladimir, blah, 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 remember my concert, how are you, would love to come back to see you, and write it by hand, I said. Please ask him. Not make it public, I will deliver it. Bam. I, we get the letter in two days. Written by McCartney, who was um, in New York promoting. How did you his, get him to write the? Not me. It was uh, oh, someone. John. 
John, John, okay. great man, кстати. Uh, anyway, so we put It's this hard to remember everybody with all the drinking so, and the So vomit. we put this letter in, and guess what happens? There's nothing, no response initially. John says, look, you know, we are, you know, we ask Paul and not, no response. No, he didn't even write back to him and so on. I was upset. I called him and I said, what the hell is wrong with you? On a balance, McCartney is much more important than Putin. Oh, he said, he's very busy, busy. I said, McCartney is busy because he's got a new album to plug. Come on, you idiots. Anyway, he got out. Bang. They told me they'll be out soon. Tell him, tell John, tell Greenpeace they'll be out. So I tweeted, they'll be out soon. So, Paul McCartney... So, no, I'm just saying, this is the soft diplomacy I like. That's how Paul McCartney and the other bands can probably write to all these people. So, are, you're not telling me you're in favor of, of Bono going to Ethiopia, no, Bono, are you? Bono, Bono, please, no. No, okay. no, no, no. Well, good, I I'm glad we can find some common ground here. Um, it does, it's... Go ahead, I Ali. I think Alexander Ottan should be doing the Russian equivalent of Hello Magazine. Because, I mean, he just knows everybody and he knows everything. It'd just be fantastic. No, Hello All Magazine is a bit yeah. sort of... Or Nazdorovia mm, Magazine or something. No, something nicer, <laughs> something more pleasant, with fine, with good-looking chicks for once, you know. <laughs> Come on, Kate Middleton and Hello. She yes. doesn't... Y no, you're he not made... I mean, Prince William made a big mistake. Why? Uh, he, he actually thinks it's a great catch for him. Why? Because... Well, because... Hey, she I'll bet you were one of the people who said she does not have she wide enough hips to birth to birth a royal heir. No, and no, I gotta tell no. you, that baby looks pretty healthy. No, she entrapped him, of course, because he's weak. He's bland. Why would you say that? Well, because he's he attacking is. the royal family here, folks. No, I have nothing, nothing I'm to not do. Ali, you want to take over family. here? Yeah, no, uh, I, I don't. Think I'm so. not attacking yeah. anybody. I'm just saying that the queen should have summoned him and said, "If you want to marry this common woman, then you will not be king." And Harry, okay, he's got a drinking problem, but he will be king. Well, who should he have married? I don't know. Another another German? Well, I don't know. I don't know. I, it doesn't matter. He has to. He had to find some. Okay, this is a very category. classist argument you're making, sir. You're saying that. You're saying that she's just not right for him. Why? Maybe they're in love. She's, she's not. <laughs> she's, oh, he likes uh, them. I don't. Uh, well, he's bland. You see, and she's bland. Well, then maybe they're Mr. perfect for each other. Maybe they, maybe they make bland and love and bland see children. His mother in law. <laughs> Unbelievable. She looks like a man. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think she, she, I don't know. No, no, it's uh, just not right. It's just not right. It's just not, not, it's just not right. And of course, I can tell you, Diana is something I'm not proud of. I mean, my part in her sort of demise. What, you were taking pictures? I was, no, I wrote a letter to her, which was published. And I said, look, you know, stop this. You know, you're, you're going to get into trouble. But unfortunately, the paper had a title for the letter. Will Diana follow the path of Rasputin? The mad monk who was murdered, by the way, my relatives were involved in his murder. And I, I, I state this in the letter. And she met me at the party and she said, how can you compare me to this mad peasant, you know, sort of witch doctor, <laughs> whatever. I said, no, 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 that was just for com not comparing because my point was that she listens to bad advice from people who try to undermine the queen and they use her. Right. And I said, that usually ends in tears. And guess what happened later? It ended in tears. So I was asked questions about it. You know, suspicions <laughs> arose about did it. You, did so you I had to go undercover to pretend to be a drunken millionaire in Paris, in the Ritz. I I, I'm getting a feeling you weren't actually <laughs> undercover, sir. I was undercover. <laughs> I, I was undercover. I would go drunk every time, and I paid for every uh, barman and the waiter, and I got the story together from them. No, it wasn't a hit. No, it wasn't a hit. No chance. Did it was an accident. You terrible, think it was an accident, for terrible, sure. Terrible, terrible accident. Because I, I pieced the bits together because they saw that, they saw that. He was completely drunk, uh, Henri Paul. And uh, he was on dope as well. So this is, you, you saw this as a tragedy. How long have you lived in, in London? 25 years. 25 this years. Time. And right. how, how often do you go back to visit Mother Russia? A lot. A lot. A lot yes. Do you consider yourself a Russian or do you consider yourself a British citizen? Well, that's difficult because, you know, I, I, I grew up in Britain. I saw the Beatles. The neck know, scratch right now, that's a tell for all of you poker players out there. A what? Yeah, when I ask you, you know, yeah. you British or... I, I have one too when people are ask, yeah. ask me if I'm British or American. So I'm sort of in between, but I'm just worried that both countries are now going down the toilet because 
the people who run them, they don't understand them. I mean, Cameron and his lot, they have no idea what the hell they're doing. Surely it's more hopeful here. It feels like boom time here in London. No, the economy is dead. Finished. There, what are you talking about? Look around. There's all the construction no, going on. The that, that, that is uh, trillion. Housing prices are going that, through the roof. People so want to come. They, they can't pay it. They're in debt to their eyeballs. Uh, they're five trillion p- growing. The economy is not growing. They have a foreigner running the central bank, which is absolutely unacceptable. You can't have a foreigner running a f- central bank. It's the same as you guys would uh, ask a Chinese to run your CIA. You know, it's the same thing because national security is there, which tells me, and he's a Goldman Sachs man, by the way. So it tells me they're going down. I, I would have no problem with a Chinese man running yeah. the CIA if he was well, really good. it would be good. more fun. If yeah. he was good at it, if he was good <laughs> And at the torture would be great. Come on. That's true. Boarding. That's They're right. In yeah, Beijing. water bo- boarding. They're like water boarding. You got some cuts. Yeah, water yeah, boarding. We, boarding. You don't need Celsius. a bucket yeah. of water. All you need That's is a drop. They say in Beijing, you use Celsius. a bucket. We just do drip, drip, drip. Yeah. God, you're wasting water yeah. with your torture. torture. Has Shameful. Never been as good as it was yeah. in China. This yes. is true. All right. Well, if I could, if I could, have, we've asked about the best case. Yeah, we've asked about the best case scenario. If I, I realize time is short, I'd like to know what's going to bring on the zombie apocalypse. What is the worst case scenario of what's going on in Crimea? Worst case. Worst case, uh, we get, well, you know, we get out of war, civil war in Ukraine. Russia is dragged in. Poland is dragged in. Baltics are dragged in. Uh, Everybody is dragged in. America stays away, laughing at everyone, of course, because it always benefits, you know. When, oh, when, you think so? Well, of course, financially, We're, yes. So wait, you're basically telling our American audience this isn't going to affect them, so just go back to sleep. Of course. Go, go to Denver, them. take a holiday, have some free weed. When China might get involved. I mean, it might be fun in a bad sort of way. But uh, that's the worst scenario. That's but the, but I, I still think that they'll probably get to agreeing something because the point is that the people who run the world are so rich now and they want to enjoy their wealth. And to them, I'd like to say something now. Yes, please. All you wealthy people in the world, you are so bored. Right here. You are so bored with your money. I have seen your wives not knowing what to do and having affairs with your gardeners and chauffeurs. I have seen you sitting in casinos bored to death. Well, let me tell you what's the point of big money. Give it to the people who don't have any. Then you'll be happy. That's my point. Thank you very much, Alexander. We have very much enjoyed having you on the show tonight. Thank you. This is Latopia After Dark. We hope you've enjoyed our show. We ask the stupid question so you don't have to. I'm, I was a little less confused uh, uh, earlier. Now I'm slightly more confused, but in a different way. I hope the information we've provided you tonight and that Alexander has provided you has been helpful, help you understand the crisis. America, I know you're tempted to go back to sleep, but this is quite an interesting period of history that we're going through. And these are, these are seismic shifts that could result in new nations, could result in something vaguely even positive, and maybe the rich will give up all their wealth. And I'd like to end, if we may, with, um, how do you say... Uh, Die imperialist American dogs, the missiles launch in six minutes in Russian. Well, you should have wrote, d- written down for me. I don't remember. Die imperialist dogs, die imperialist imperialistic sabaki. The missiles launch in six minutes. There we are. Good night, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Ian Wynn. This is Peter Cox on the boards. Say good night, Ali Gardner. It's been wonderful having you again. Good night. And thank you for joining us, Alexander. A pleasure. Thank you.